Hello everyone. Uh, a couple of you asked me if I could make a video about the new Lords of War, about Gromash, but I think the story pretty much speaks for itself. I do want to point a few interesting things out and maybe clear a few things up, so let's begin this video, shall we? There are always lives lost, but marching our forces blindly into Drano poses unthinkable danger. Yes, but you must have the fortitude to face whatever awaits us on the other side. I assure you, our enemy's will is unwavering. Let me tell you of their leader. A warlord whose defiance in the face of death became legend. The story begins with Gromash hanging out in the desert after getting captured by the ogres. He had his warsong troops raid upon ogre territory and from Rise of the Horde we see a completely different kind of ogre than we see in Warlords and in this video. The ogres in Rise of the Horde, they were enslaved by the Grun and were already enemies with the orcs. Apparently this war between orc and ogre went much further than suggested since the ogre presence has to have been pretty big to raid so much of the territory and these ogres seem to be fully in charge of their own actions. This one ogre warlord even gets to have his own fancy umbrella thingy, which, well, that just says it all to be honest. Now the ogres that we see on our Azeroth, they actually came with the first horde invasion. They did not exist on Azeroth before that moment. Gul'dan, he convinced Blackhand, who was the war chief of the horde at the time, to convert the ogres into the horde troops, and you have to understand that this was complete madness at the time. Ogres, they were considered to be stupid and violent creatures with a long history of fighting the orcs, but times change even for the original hordes, and they managed to convince the ogres to join them. It was only a matter of time until the ogres retaliated. Among the victims of their retribution was Gromash's mate, Golka. We never knew who Garrosh's mother was, who Grom's mate was, until the short story Hellscream, and now we know why Grom was constantly hearing her whispers during that story. She asks Gromash to give her the warrior's death that she earned, but he refuses to give it. She has lost her teeth, has bent like so many of his warriors before, and he leaves his own mate behind to die of her wounds. In our reality, Golka met with the same fate, with the one difference that she first gave birth to Garrosh before dying. In this reality, that never happened, Garrosh was never born. End it! So many of my warriors bent like reeds, and now you, you are a wolf with no teeth. All of you. After losing his mate, Gromash decides to strike back at the ogres and he tries to rally his troops, but most of them already lost so much that they refused to follow him. Stubborn and dedicated to show them all what being a warsong is all about, Gromash decides to face the ogre army alone. What's interesting is that he's fighting with two weapons in this scene and some suggest that he had two Gorhals, but I personally think that he just left Gorhal behind, since he was smart enough to realize that he probably wouldn't make it. In the last shot where they all rally behind Gromash again, and also in the War of Draenor introduction trailer, we only see him with one weapon, so either he had three Gorhals ready, or he left this one behind and later picked it up again. Your warriors. They beg for death. Your lands are mine. Your body is broken. You have nothing left. Say the word, and I will end your suffering. Yes. He was certain that Gromash had given up, was ready to die. The body, after all, had grown so weak, had become... So thin. Say it. Say the word, and it's over. This wolf still has teeth. <laughs> 
So many of his warriors already begged for death, but Gromash, he has an iron will. He hasn't lost his teeth yet, and he bites the ogre's neck, he kills it, and then he decides to just eat the rest of the ogre to get some of his strength back. Some of you asked me how it was possible for Gromash to escape, and honestly, I have no idea. The video didn't exactly give details about this. Perhaps he had become so thin that he could easily release himself. Perhaps eating an ogre gives you a nice food buff. Who knows the reason? It just looks epic. And let's just go with it. Upon returning, many warriors, even those never born within the war song, they rally to Hellscream's side and the war song is reborn. They resume their raids on the ogres, which probably explains why we don't see that many of them on Draenor, and eventually Gul'dan spreads the news that there's an external threat that they should all get ready for. Until the clans decide how to combat the threat, there was nothing to fight, so the war song was getting bored and they started to duel each other to keep their heads cool and entertained. And this went on until a certain Garrosh Hellscream found his way to Draenor and set things in motion to make Gromash the leader of the Iron Hordes. Our bond is iron. Our will unbreakable. Who will stand against us? After watching this video, I wanted two things. First of all, how was it possible for Marat to know all of this? And second of all, if these stories also match our characters, their history. It's been confirmed on Twitter that Marat is telling these stories from what he knows from his timeline. So that means that these stories also apply to the Gromash, to the Kargov, to the Duratan. All of these stories also include into our history. Any inconsistencies, any things that don't match up, they will automatically be retconned, which means that their history will change if it's required for the story. So far, I haven't found many mistakes yet, and it fits in nicely with the history of these characters, and I hope Blizzard keeps this up. Naturally, Marat wasn't present during all of these events, but you can give a spin to it as to how he knows. Maybe overheard some orcs talking about it, maybe he found some scrolls, maybe they interrogated orcs. There are plenty of ways for Marat to get information, but it will never be 100% accurate. Only Kargov can tell what happened during his time as a prisoner. Only Gromash left that desert alive. So it will never be 100% accurate, but it is the story given. And that's my coverage for Lords of War Part 2. I'm really impressed with these videos, to be honest. I love the art style, I love the voice acting, they're pretty damn brutal. The way Blizzard is adding more public media to the lore, I love all of it. I really hope that we'll see more of this in the future, and perhaps they'll find some way to bridge the lore between the end of the siege and war crimes. It would suck if people were forced to read a book in order to understand the story, but it also wouldn't be the first time that they do this. Let's just hope that they'll add something in a video in-game, whatever that explains the moments between the siege and, and Warlords of Draenor, that explains how Garrosh traveled back, made the Dark Portal, connected it, invaded, all that good stuff. For now, this is the end of my coverage, so thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, and until next time guys, see ya! Whee!